Hello, and welcome to part 29 of my video series, and I'm going to use Blender 2.7. In this video, I'll be talking about Blender's new Pi menus. Now, Pi menus are a new addition to Blender that come to us in the form of an add-on. In order to use Pi menus, we have to have at least Blender 2.72 or newer. So if you're using an older version than that, you'll have to update at www.blender.org. Now, Pi menus are not enabled by default. They're an add-on that you have to enable in Blender's user preferences. So let's go ahead and click on the splash screen to get rid of it. And under the file menu, let's go to user preferences. And under this add-ons tab is where we'll find all of the user preferences that you can enable by checking on this little uh, checkbox next to the add-on. But the Pi menu is located under the user interface category. So I'll click on that and then let's scroll back up and here it is, the official Pi menus add-on. To enable it, let's click on the little checkbox and click on save user settings. So from this point forward, my Blender will have the uh, Pi menus enabled. Let's go ahead and close the user preferences and let's talk about what Pi menus are. Pi menus are round menus that enhance the speed of how quick we can use Blender and they give us a really quick access to many of the features that we often use. The first one we'll talk about, and I'll be talking about six in this video, is the tab key. Now, up until now, what the tab key did is if I had a mesh selected, the tab key would toggle me between object mode and edit mode. And that was great, but what about the other modes? If you're an advanced Blender user, you'll know that down here under the mode menu, I have access to, of course, object mode and edit mode, but there's also modes for sculpting, vertice painting, weight painting, and texture painting, and to toggle between those, I actually have to move my mouse down to the bottom of the screen and click this and change the mode, which is slow and cumbersome. Now, if I press tab to bring up my mode pie menu, I get all these options at my fingertips or mouse cursor. I can click on any of these options, so I can click this to go into edit mode, press tab, click to go back to object mode. But the power of pie menus is not in the fact that you can click on them. They are keyboard shortcut and gesture based. So if I press tab to bring that back up, this is the mode pie menu, and I press six on my numpad, or four, or seven, or eight, or nine, or one, I can select any of these options very quickly. Now, this does mean that I have to move my mouse, or my hand off of my mouse, and press those numbers on my numpad on the side of my keyboard. But even more powerful than this are gestures. So what this means is, I don't even have to wait for this pie menu to load, I can just press tab, or whatever high menu key I talk about, and I can gesture with my mouse without even clicking to that direction, and it'll select that option for me. So what that looks like is, right now I'm in object mode. If I press tab and immediately swipe to the right, it goes into edit mode. So I'll do that, tab, and to the right, I'm in edit mode. If I press tab and swipe to the left, I can go into object mode. So what this means is that once I get used to where these things are, I can switch between these modes very, very quickly. It's a great thing. It just takes a little bit of time to get used to where these things are. So that's the tab key. It brings up the first of six new Pi menus. The next key is the key that will toggle between the different viewport shading modes. Now, up until now, the Z key on your keyboard has toggled between solid viewport shading mode, which is how we're looking at the scene right now, and wireframe mode. And those, of course, options are right down here under the viewport shading mode. Wireframe is right there and solid is right there. But what about rendered, material, textured, and bounding box viewport shading modes? Well, now the Z key brings up all those options for us. I can, of course, click on any of these options, including solid or wireframe. But now I can just play around and get used to what they do. So I'll tap Z and swipe to the left. That goes into bounding box mode. Swipe to the right goes to Wireframe mode, those two things look the same because I only have a cue on my scene right now. Uh, up goes to textured mode. Up and to the right goes to rendered mode. And as you can see, I'm not that used to them yet. But of course, you can play with it and get more used to it yourself. I'll switch back into solid mode and let's keep on going. The next keyboard shortcut is perhaps my favorite. In fact, it wasn't even a keyboard shortcut at all. It was the Q key. The Q key did nothing up until now. But if you press it now, it brings up your Pi menu for your different views. So up until now, if you had a numpad on your keyboard, you could very easily press 1 to go to your front view, press 3 to go to your right view, and 7 to go to your top view. So 1, 3, and 7 are very handy keyboards for new users. And if you hold Control down, you'll go to the opposite of those things. So Control 1 goes to back, Control 3 goes to left, and Control 7 goes to bottom. And of course, the 5 key toggles between 
uh, orthographic and perspective views. Well, now the Q key brings those right into your interface, and this is great especially for beginners. So if I press Q and swipe to the left, I go to, I go to my left view, to the right view, of course to the right, uh, swiping up goes to the top, swiping down goes to the bottom, up and to the right goes to the back, up and left goes to the front, down left goes to the camera view, and bottom right toggles between orthographic and perspective views. This is my favorite one, the Q key. The next one on my list is the snapping pie menu, and this has a longer keyboard shortcut. It is control shift tab on my keyboard. If you don't know what snapping is, I actually made a video on it a few days ago or a few weeks ago now, um, so you can check out that video in this playlist um, on my channel. If you don't know what snapping is, basically what it does is if I click on this little magnet, I can now grab an object and it'll snap to a grid. Now the grid is the only thing that your snapping will snap to. In fact, right next to this magnet, you can snap to increments, in other words, the grid on your screen. You can snap to vertices, edges, faces, or volumes of the same object or of other objects. And this is great, especially for doing things like filling holes in meshes. So that is the snapping menu. It is control shift tab. And I'll click on this little snap to turn off snapping. The next pie menu is the pivot menu. So I'm gonna go to my front view first, and what the pivot menu does is by default, all objects rotate around their median point. And that's because, if I right or I press escape to get out of there, down here, this is the pivot point menu. So median point is the default option. The keyboard shortcut for this now is the period key on your keyboard, which gives you, of course, the median point option, as well as other types of pivot points that you can use, including 3D cursor. Now, there is one kind of dangerous thing here, and that is center points. And what center points does, and it's usually this button right down here, is if you had this option selected, and you've probably found yourself scratching your head as to why weird things are happening in Blender, is if you have that option selected, you can no longer rotate objects that you have selected. You can't even scale objects, because what this option does is it treats all objects like a collection of vertices, and so you can't rotate a vertice, and you can't scale a vertice, which means with this option selected, you can't rotate or scale anything. So just keep that in mind. What you can do with this, though, is if I duplicate this cube, and I select both of them, if you have median point selected, and I'll turn that option off, it'll rotate around the point in the middle of those two objects. If I scale, the same thing happens. It scales towards that median point, or it scales out from that median point. But if I change that option, and I'll press the period key, I'll select 3D cursor instead. If I rotate these two cubes, and I put my 3D cursor somewhere out here, it'll rotate around that 3D cursor. So it's pretty powerful. That becomes very handy once you get more in depth in modeling, especially modeling organic things like characters. Let's go ahead and press period and turn it back to medium point, and let's continue on. So I'll delete this second cube. The last time menu is probably the simplest one. It is control spacebar. What control spacebar does is it toggles or brings up your pie menu for your gizmo or your manipulator. That's what these arrows are. It's your gizmo or manipulator. If I press control spacebar, I can select any of my three different types, the translate, the rotate, or the scale, or move, rotate, and scale, and I can turn it off and on, which of course I could do down here. I can select any of the three options or turn it off and on uh, right here. But now I can do it with control spacebar, and there you go. So that's a really quick introduction to all six new Pi menus. How do you customize them, though? Well, first of all, let me say that I love the Pi menus. They're great, especially the Q key. But when I'm teaching, and I teach Blender to a lot of new users, I don't like that the tab key gives you so many options. Because if people see weight paint, they're going to start and go there. So I don't want the tab key to be accessing this Pi menu. I want the tab key to just behave like it did before. To change that, under Blender's user preferences, I need to go to the input tab. And this is where you can access all of Blender's sections with all of its keyboard shortcuts and change pretty much any keyboard shortcut in Blender. But what I'll do here is I'll type in Pi to search for it. And as you can see, I can now see all the keyboard shortcuts for my different Pi menus, Control or Shift Control Tab period, control space bar, Q, Z, and tab. The tab key, I don't want to work like that anymore. I want to change it to alt tab. So I'll open this section up and check alt. And now the keyboard shortcut is alt tab. I'll save my user settings and I'll close the window 
And so now the tab key goes back toggling between object and edit mode, but alt tab will bring me this mode pie menu, which I think is ideal. Uh, that's going to be it for me talking about the pie menu, but what I just want to bring up before I end this video is I'm probably not going to be using the pie menu in my future videos. And the reason for that is it's an add on. And if people who haven't watched this video watch my future videos, then they'll get confused and not know what's going on and see this weird looking thing and not know why they're pressing the same thing as me and not getting the same result. So that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.